Hey guys, Admiral Spicy S here. The Necromancer class and theme is my favorite to play in any game, and I personally want to make games with a focus on necromancy. So this video is going to be an analysis of the qualities that make a Necromancer class feel right, both thematically and from a gameplay standpoint. So the strategy for the video is I'm going to be looking at a few games with Necromancer classes. These games will be Path of Exile, Skyrim with the Ordinator mod, and Grim Dawn. These games were picked partially because of their relative popularity, but mostly because these are games which I have spent a lot of time on. I'm going to evaluate what works well and what doesn't in each game's implementation of the Necromancer class, and I'm going to attempt to find common themes across the games in terms of gameplay and mechanics. Hopefully through this analysis, I'll be able to come up with a cohesive set of ideas about how Necromancer classes should be designed. So first off, let's start with a definition of a Necromancer. It's simply a person who practices necromancy. And necromancy, as defined by Wikipedia, is a practice of magic involving communication with the dead, either by summoning their spirit as an apparition or raising them bodily, for the purpose of divination, imparting the means to foretell future events or discover hidden knowledge, to bring someone back from the dead, or to use the dead as a weapon, as the term may sometimes be used in a more general sense to refer to black magic or witchcraft. Games tend to lean heavily on the use the dead as a weapon part. I will be more or less strictly adhering to this definition when analyzing the games presented in this video. This means that I won't be looking at summoner or warlock classes, and I'll only be looking at games with necromancer classes who have some command of the dead. I'll also be using the term minion as a generic term to describe an undead entity brought into existence by a necromancer. With these definitions established, the following categories by which to judge and analyze games can be directly derived. Minion Viability Are minions strong enough to effectively achieve the game's goal? And are minions required to effectively achieve the game's goal? Minion Variety Is the necromancer able to choose from a wide array of minion types? If so, is the variety purely aesthetic, or does it serve a gameplay purpose? And is the necromancer able to utilize only a few minions at once, or many? Minion control. How much direct control does the necromancer have over minions? Are minions self-sufficient, or do minions require explicit commands? Minion customizability. Can the necromancer enhance their minions either directly or indirectly, beyond linear or exponential stat increases. Strength of the Necromancer Can the Necromancer deal directly with problems presented via gameplay him or herself? And if so, how capable is the Necromancer in completing the gameplay goals while underutilizing minions? So with our definitions and categories out of the way, let's get right into the game by game analysis. Grim Dawn Grim Dawn is an action RPG in the vein of Diablo. It added a Necromancer class in its Ashes of Malmoth expansion, and the Necromancer has typical class archetype abilities. Minion Viability Minions are a major aspect of the Necromancer class, and are the source of most of the DPS a Necromancer in Grim Dawn can do. The Necromancer class Skill Tree offers nodes that grant minion skills and buff minion types. The skill tree has multiple rankings for skills, so investing more skill points makes skills stronger. Minion viability is enhanced with the loot system, which provides ample bonuses to minion stats. The loot system, in combination with a multi-rank progression system, ensures that minions can stay strong enough throughout the game to deal with enemies. Each minion type stays relevant as long as points are invested into it, and the player can also allocate points into auras that buff minions further. Outside of the skill tree is the devotion system, which is like a secondary generic skill tree for passive bonuses. This devotion system contains many passive bonuses that buff minion damage or survivability. 
So minion builds are perfectly viable and even the encouraged way of playing the Necromancer. Minion Variety Grim Dawn gives the player a healthy amount of minion variety. At least three different minion types are achievable through the skill tree alone. In addition to providing stat bonuses to minions, loot can sometimes grant additional abilities including minion abilities. In my playthrough, I had two additional minion abilities granted by my equipment. This is an engaging mechanic that encourages players to be on the lookout for equipment that could potentially grow the player's army. Other non-undead minions are available both from loot and the multi-class system. Each minion type contributes something unique to combat. For example, the Blight Fiend is a huge, tanky minion that deals physical and poison damage in an area. Raise Skeletons raises both melee and ranged skeletons, and some minions have additional abilities and differing damage types. Not only is the variety in minion types there, but there's no hard cap on the total number of summoned minions. Many minions are limited to one of that type, with the exception of Ray's Skeletons, which has a hard cap that can be expanded via the skill tree and itemization. If you have five minion types available, you can summon at least one of each. This frees the player from having restricted minion options. Overall, I can't think of much criticism to mention for the minion variety in Grim Dawn. It does a great job all around. Minion Control Grim Dawn does a decent job of giving the player control over minions. Each minion type can be set to one of three combat behaviors. Defensive, passive, or aggressive. Additionally, there is a pet attack command that can be issued to focus minions on a position or target. Though the control over minions provided to the player is decent, it could do with some further enhancements. For example, being able to set the aggressiveness for each individual raised skeleton would be nice. Currently, all skeletons use the same combat behavior. And being able to fragment minions across multiple enemies that are designated by the player. When you issue the pet attack command, all minions will focus the same spot, which can be a little difficult when you are being attacked from multiple different sides. Minion control in general feels good, however. The AI system seems pretty intelligent and minions don't have trouble keeping up with the player. It is worth noting that minions will teleport to the player if they do go outside of a certain range. As a result of the solid AI and teleport mechanics, DPS doesn't seem to drop off at all and generally feels pretty consistent. Minion customizability. This is an area where Grim Dawn suffers. There isn't any sort of minion customization beyond simply choosing which types of minions the players want to support. There's no ability to change minion equipment, for example. The only enhancements available to minions are stat increases via equipment, the skill tree, and the devotion mechanic. Strength of the Necromancer As mentioned earlier, Grim Dawn has a multi-class system. While the Necromancer class itself may not be terribly strong without minions, the secondary class pick can greatly improve DPS and survivability of the player. Therefore, it may be possible to effectively get through the game with limited minion use. However, it seems like the path of least resistance is to utilize minions available to the Necromancer. In conclusion, Grim Dawn's implementation of the Necromancer class hits all the main points central to a Necromancer class. It offers varied minion choice, minions are viable throughout the game, with no minion types becoming irrelevant as long as the player keeps their respective skills leveled. A reasonable amount of control over minions is given to the player, and the player can play a supporting role to the minions, dealing DPS and managing auras to buff minions. The non-existent minion customizability leaves a lot to be desired, but I find that the lack of it doesn't necessarily detract from the gameplay. Skyrim with the Ordinator mod. Skyrim, as a base game, contains a Conjuration School of Magic which grants abilities to summon spectral and undead allies. The Ordinator mod overhauls the perk tree to include many more undead focused perks. To gain access to these perks, Conjuration must be leveled by routinely casting and using Conjuration spells. 
Leveling the Conjuration skills allows the player to summon higher level undead, which also cost more magicka, which is, of course, Skyrim's mana resource. The Ordinator mod allows you to command several summoned and reanimated minions at once. Minion Viability Minions are generally required if focusing on Conjuration. Mana stacking allows the player to summon more powerful minions and higher number of minions. This mechanic creates a feedback loop that encourages a reliance on minions. Magicka stacking keeps the player relatively squishy while leveling, but also provides more power through minions. It's not unreasonable to end up with a small army of around 10 to 15 minions if you engage in this feedback loop. There is a DPS improvement with each additional minion, plus the extra body greatly increases the ease of encounters with Skyrim's tougher enemies. In and out of combat, minions can be easily resummoned or reanimated, and skeletons in this mod are special. They cannot die from enemy damage, instead they enter a down but not out stage when their health falls to zero. I really like this mechanic because it allows the player to have some consistency in their army. If a few skeletons go down, you don't have to worry about keeping them summoned. The big issue with this implementation of the Necromancer class though, is Skyrim's awful AI. Minions have a tough time finding their ways through winding caverns. Minions tend to fall far behind the player during any type of travel. Like Grim Dawn, minions will teleport to the player when out of range, but this range seems to be too large to be very effective. Minions will sometimes fail to attack an enemy or will inadvertently damage other friendly minions. These AI issues make the class feel really clunky to play and take away any sense of connection to your minions. Minion Variety Minion Variety is a big plus to this mod's class implementation. The player is able to summon melee skeletons as part of the perk tree, but a later perk allows you to summon skeleton mages in addition to the standard melee skeletons. These mages can be any of three elemental damage types, which further increases the variety. The reanimated dead spells allow the player to choose almost any corpse to be a follower. The dead thrall spell allows players to reanimate a corpse of their choosing indefinitely. This alone adds a great variety to the pool of potential minions and it spurs the player to be on the lookout for particularly powerful enemies to slaughter. The player can choose to use as few or as many minions as their magicka pool allows and minion variety is generally pretty good with this mod, but there are issues with the class. Minions often don't have distinct characteristics to encourage the player to choose them over others that offer plain raw power. And the fact that some minion abilities are better just on the principle of being a higher level creates a sort of soft cap to the minion variety. This mod does not give the player the ability to use lower level summons in a viable manner, which further reduces the pool of available minions and the potential variety. Minion Control The player generally has very little control over minions in this mod, which is frustrating. Minions may not prioritize targets correctly and may create difficult situations for the player to survive. As a result of the lack of control, minion damage output tends to feel very inconsistent and unsatisfying. Lack of consistent damage makes the player feel weak and disconnected from minions despite the size of the army. There is a perk later in the Conjuration Tree that allows the player to assume control of a skeleton while granting the skeleton increased stats. This generally feels pretty good, but still a very limited amount of control over the army as a whole. And just as a note, skeletons can be given basic commands that don't serve the gameplay to a significant extent. Minion Customizability Perks are available that increase the strength of minion types, so there is a good amount of choice when allocating points in the Conjuration perk tree. A high level perk enhances Dead Thrall to allow the player to manage Thrall inventories. This allows the player to equip their reanimated dead with the equipment of the player's choosing. And this opens opportunities to use enchantments on that equipment to further enhance the strength of reanimated thralls. Skeleton mages can be created that deal fire, frost, or shock damage. And combining them with the melee skeletons offers a nice synergy. 
Beyond the dead thralls and customization via choosing different minion types, there isn't any more meaningful way to customize minions. Skeleton warriors and mages, for example, cannot be given equipment, and this is the case for most of the conjurable entities. Necromancer Strength Because of the minion weaknesses outlined, it is almost necessary for the player to allocate points into other combat trees. Skyrim is a game with many perk trees, and it does encourage the player to focus on multiple skills. Putting perk points into another magic school like Destruction equips the player with a consistent source of DPS. It's more than viable to take melee combat skills as well to fight alongside your minions. It doesn't feel viable to rely entirely or even mostly on minions to accomplish the gameplay goals. This mod can be played with a total reliance on minions, but the pacing is inconsistent and the gameplay is frustrating. Having to wait for minions to catch up and deal damage, for example, is a chore rather than fun. In conclusion, the Ordinator mod for Skyrim scratches the Necromancer itch temporarily, but it becomes clear within hours that the minion skills and perks are not totally reliable. The lack of minion control and bad AI contributes greatly to the frustrating gameplay. It often feels like minions must be babysat to ensure that they are keeping up with the player's travel and attacking the correct enemies. However, when minions are behaving to their fullest potential, the players feel unstoppable, walking nonchalantly through a battle without worry. The first or third person perspective greatly contributes to a feeling of connectedness, like the minions have your back and can deal with threats that are not the necromancer's main focus. The core problem to this class implementation is, like mentioned, the total unreliability, which is the fault of the underlying engine itself rather than the mod author. Path of Exile Path of Exile is an action RPG that makes Necromancer gameplay available with an Ascendancy class for the base Witch class. The Necromancer Ascendancy focuses mainly on enhancing minion-based gameplay. Minion Viability Skills in Path of Exile all have a base level range of 1 to 20. Because of this mechanic, any skills that grant minions can be leveled up to keep minions on equal footing with other enemies. Additionally, Path of Exile contains support gems which can be linked to minion skills to buff them in certain ways. For example, damage supports and survivability supports can be linked to scale minions. Many nodes on the game's massive passive tree grant minion stats, including minion life and damage, which can be allocated to further enhance minions. Unique and rare items can potentially add to minion stats and behaviors. It's worth noting that minion stats are completely separate from player stats. Minions do not benefit from stats that do not explicitly state that they apply to minions. There are numerous minion builds that have completed endgame content which indicates that minion builds are viable in general. It's probably possible to take the Necromancer Ascendancy and complete the game without minions, but minion-based gameplay is strongly encouraged when taking this Ascendancy as it does not supply any bonuses to non-minion skills. Minion Variety Path of Exile contains six different skill gems that grant the ability to summon undead minions. One of these skill gems is the Summon Spectre skill gem, which allows the caster to raise any non-boss mob as a permanent minion. Abilities that the mob could use before it was resurrected are able to be used by the corresponding Spectre. This provides a vast amount of choice when making Spectre-focused or Spectre-supported builds. In addition to the explicit granting of minion skills, several minion supporting gems can be utilized to modify minions further. At a very basic level, minions can be given speed, additional damage, and slash or elemental damage. Minion choice in combination with the available supporting gems provides a vast variety of viable minion-based builds. This fact keeps minion builds fresh. If you like playing as a necromancer like myself, you can make a build that focuses around any minion or combinations of minions of your choosing. Each minion type has a hard cap on the number of summoned minions, but there is no hard cap overall to the total number of minions you can summon. As a note, there is a soft cap to total overall minions as cooldowns, 
hard summon limits, and available skill slots all play a role in restricting the overall size of an army. Minion hard cap limits can often be raised via allocating the appropriate passive, tree points, and itemization. All undead minions behave slightly differently and have different abilities. However, despite this variety in behaviors and available abilities, I have not found that undead minions are situationally viable. Minion builds tend to focus around a single minion type that deals massive damage, with perhaps specters or zombies serving a meat shield or supportive role. It does not seem viable to use more than two or so minion types in one build. The resources that could be spent making more minion types viable in a single build can usually be better spent by simply buffing the damage output of one or two minion types. Minion Control The Path of Exile Necromancer has limited control over the summoned minions. There is a skill gem called Convocation that recalls all minions to the player's position. This skill can be used to reposition minions into a more favorable position or to rescue the necromancer in sticky situations. It has a short cooldown, so it cannot be used to constantly reposition minions. A skill called Desecrate can be used, which will cause minions to focus on the area in which Desecrate is active. The viability of this skill to focus minions seems shaky. Sometimes it appears to work, and other times it doesn't. It has a cast time which roots the player in place, so it's often better to just use Convocation as a means of controlling minions. Beyond the Convocation skill, there are Offering skills which can be used to consume corpses and buff minions. One of the most popular Offering skills is Flesh Offering, which increases minion attack and movement speed. It at least provides a little bit more control in terms of damage output, basically providing damage on demand, but it doesn't offer any more control over minions beyond simple damage output. And lastly, minion damage can be modified with player sourced auras, but again this doesn't provide any sort of behavioral control over minions. Minion customizability. Like mentioned earlier, the raise specter skill can be used to resurrect an enemy mob of your choosing which can be used as a centerpiece or a complement to minion builds. Additionally, there is a passive node available that takes the stats of the shield equipped on the player and instead applies it to all minions. This is a fantastic way, in theory, to augment your minions with additional damage, resistances, and unique stats. Unfortunately, there tend to be only a small number of viable shields to use with this passive node. Still, it's a great tool to have when crafting or considering a minion build and does add a large degree of customizability to minions. Zombie builds have an option to take a jewel that can be socketed in the passive tree which will buff zombies. This doesn't do much beyond a pure damage increase, but it's yet another path to consider with regards to minion customization. Finally, support gems that were previously mentioned can be used to greatly customize minion skills and damage. Gems like Greater Multiple Projectiles can be used to increase the number of projectiles minions fire, and Melee Splash is a gem that grants physical damage in a small area to use with melee minions. Strength of the Necromancer If focusing solely on minions, the Necromancer can do practically no damage at all. Most of the Necromancer's focus and time will be spent on dodging enemy spell attacks and casting minion supporting skills. Necromancers can be built to withstand a lot of enemy damage and can be equipped with a large degree of general survivability. So while tanky and not totally helpless, the Necromancer lacks the ability to do any damage for herself and must rely on minions completely. In conclusion, Path of Exile's Necromancer class is one of the best available in gaming at the moment. It scratches that pure summoner itch by trading Necromancer strength for a total focus on minions. The Necromancer plays little more than a support role to minions, making sure that they are appropriately buffed. The variety in viable minion builds keeps playing as a Necromancer fresh and interesting. The class doesn't feel like it lags much behind the other classes in terms of the ability to complete the game's content. 
Things like clear speed and boss damage can be hard metrics to get up as a summoner, mostly because the damage output is reliant on minion AI. The AI is generally good, but without fine control over individual minions, the Necromancer is still subject to the algorithm that determines pathfinding and enemies to target. Above all else, Path of Exile is still receiving regular content updates, which can and have touched on or expanded minion mechanics and skills. So now that we've looked at the three games that I wanted to look at, what can we deduce from that analysis? So here are my findings. So to have a good Necromancer class, first and foremost, the minion AI must be smart. We don't want to run into issues where minions output unreliable DPS or generally don't do anything. The player must also have control over the minions in such a way that minion behaviors feel predictable and reliable. This sort of ties in with AI, but having explicit control to counteract instances of bad AI would be immensely helpful. Variety and customizability enhances the gameplay, making it more interesting and by definition varied. Ways to do this is to allow players to equip their minions with loot that they find and for minions to be able to borrow player stats, as we see in Path of Exile. Each minion type available to a necromancer should feel distinct and should serve a gameplay purpose, even if that purpose is simply to provide variety. So, with the Ordinator mod example, the minions don't really do anything beyond do damage, but just having the variety is nice. Raise Spectre in the Dead Thrall are good examples of that variety. They're both mainly for damage, but you get to choose what kind of damage you want to do, and you get to choose what kind of minion you get to have following you. For pure summoner gameplay, the Necromancer should not be able to deal damage directly to enemies. The Necromancer should provide a mostly supporting role to minions. If the Necromancer can be of significant help in combat, they should feel a sense of connectedness and support from the minions. So, like we saw with the Skyrim Ordinator mod, the first and third person's perspective helps with this. So you can go into battle with your minions taking care of the ancillary threats. Alright, so that's the end of my analysis and those are my findings. Um, and I hope you guys just generally found this video interesting and or informative. If you want, please consider subscribing and I will see you all in the next video.